بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل, محدث وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week. And this is where the Shaykh arrived in his lesson with regards to the two types of intermediary. And he explains the first type. He says the first type of intermediary. He says, Anna'u al-awwalu hadha alladhi yatahadathu anhu al-Shaykh رحمه الله وهو من الشرك بالله الناقل من ملة الإسلام. So as you remember from the last couple of lessons I've been going on, where the Sheikh has mentioned that the type of intermediary that results in a person if he falls into it, uh, he falls into the greater shirk, which then leads him out of the fold of Islam, makes him leave the fold of Islam, i.e. he falls into Kufr Akbar. Uh, so this is what the Shaykh has been going through, as in the original author as well, as the Shaykh who's explaining this book, Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Allah. And um, the Shaykh mentions that, and that's been extensively explained by the Shaykh as well. And then he moves on and he says, no Uthani, so the second type of intermediary, the Shaykh says, no Uthani, اتخاذ الوسائط في إبلاغ دين الله وهم الأنبياء فالأنبياء فالأنبياء واسطة بيننا وبين إله يبلغون دين الله يبلغوننا دين الله لا نعرف دين الله إلا بواسطة الأنبياء هم الذين بلغون دين الله فهم واسطة في إبلاغ دين الله ولهذا انظر في الآيات التي في سورة البقرة المبدوعة بقوله يسألونك يسألونك عن الأهلة ويسألونك عن المحيض يسألونك عن اليتامى آيات كثيرة مبدوعة يسألونك يقول الله في كل ذلك قل so let's just stop there for a second. So then, as the Sheikh mentions, the first type of intermediary is where people are using a, a thing in the middle between them and Allah in terms of worship. This is clearly shirk because worship should be directed to Allah directly without any intermediary. That's clear, and the Sheikh explained that in the previous lessons we've been going through. Then the second type, the Sheikh mentions here, the second type of intermediary, it is in in relation to receiving the deen of Allah. And what he mentions here is via the prophets, through the prophets. Why? Because we cannot receive the revelation except by way of the prophets and messengers. So therefore, they're a type of intermediary where we receive our knowledge and information with regards to the deen. We receive the commandments, we receive the prohibitions, we receive the news and information through the Prophet ﷺ. For example, in our deen, through the Prophet ﷺ. For the deen to be conveyed to mankind, Allah sends, as in, in our example here, easy example, Allah sent, sent uh, Angel Jibreel with the revelation to the Prophet 
Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam conveyed it to the people like that. But in this sense, there's nothing wrong with this, and it's receiving the deen. The Sheikh goes on to say, here he says that we we can't know the deen of Allah except through the prophets. They are the ones who have conveyed the deen of Allah to us. So they are in the middle between us and Allah in terms of receiving the deen, knowing what deen to follow and how to carry out our daily lives in terms of our religion, what's upon us, etc. And the Sheikh says, for that reason, look to uh, look into the verses of the Quran in Surah, in particular, in Surah Baqarah that begin with "Yes, Alunak." They ask you, and then Sheikh brings other examples. They ask you about, you know, the phases of the moon, for example, time. They ask you about menstruation. They ask you about, you know, the orphans, and you know, and other uh, ayahs that begin with "They ask you." So the Sheikh, he says, ذَلِكَ قُلْ As in, say, where Allah says to the Prophet Wasallam, say, as in, answer them, and say, etc., whatever that Allah has commanded the Prophet Wasallam to say. The Sheikh says, this is an intermediary in terms of conveying and receiving the religion, the message that the, that the Prophet Wasallam was sent with. And the Sheikh says that we wouldn't know the rulings, uh, we wouldn't know the the law, the Islamic law, and we wouldn't know what worship is, and we wouldn't know what commandments are, and we wouldn't know what the prohibitions are, except through the conveyance, conveyance of the prophets. And the prophets, they are an intermediary between us and Allah in receiving the, uh, receiving the message. That, that through them we learn about the deen and we learn what Allah expects of us, etc. As the Sheikh mentioned. The Sheikh says it's not possible that we know a thing uh, from the deen of Allah except through the messengers. So the Sheikh has clarified that for us. Alhamdulillah. The Sheikh continues, he says, فَالْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَاسِطَةٌ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ فِي إِبْلَاغِ دِينِ سبحانه وتعالى أما أما عبادة الله ودعاء الله فالله يدعى مباشرة ولا يتخذ في الدعاء والإبادة واسطة بين العبد وبين الله سبحانه وتعالى ولهذا لما جاء السؤال عن هذا النوع اختلفت الصيغة في القرآن قال وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب حتى قل لم تأتي هنا وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب لم يقل قل إني قريب ارتفعت قل لأنه ما في واسطة الدعاء ما فيه واسطة مباشرة تدعو الله أين ما كنت تدعو الله في أي مكان تكون تدعو الله بينما المظلين إذا أراد أن يدعو الله يقول لا أذهب عند القبر يتوسط به وإذا لم عدو الله عند القبر ما ينفع دعائي لأنه ما فيه واسطة هم يقولون So then the Sheikh he says So the messengers they're an intermediary between us and Allah in receiving the message um, and receiving the deen and understanding what's required of us. Then the Shaykh, he contrasts and he says, as for worshipping Allah, example, for example, uh, supplicating to Allah, making dua to Allah, then Allah is worshipped directly. And there is no uh, intermediary when it comes to worship. Allah is worshipped directly. And the Sheikh says this is the reason when um, when a question came on this type, then 
you know, in the Quran, the 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 way you know it's structured, the verse is structured is different, and you can see from that here where the Sheikh uh, brings ayahs from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse one hundred eighty-six. وَإِذَا سَلَكَ إِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ So if uh, so if um, one of my slaves, Allah says, if one of my slaves, if my slave asks of me, then indeed I am near in his hearing. If you read to the end of the ayah, of this ayah, then it says, وَإِذَا سَلَكَ إِبَادِي أَنِّي uh, أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ So basically that if, I'll, if a slave of Allah Asks Allah, supplicates to Allah and asks Him. Then Allah says, I'm near, I hear, I answer. I answer the uh, dua, the supplication of the supplicator. Right? And that's what that means if you read the whole ayah. And the Shaykh mentions here that if you look and examine this ayah and ponder over it, you'll see that when it comes to worship, there is no, you don't see qul where Allah has mentioned to the Prophet to say something to the people. In fact, it's direct here, right? As it's clear from the ayah. And the Shaykh says, he goes on to say, uh, he goes to explain this ayah, and he says, why isn't there, why doesn't Allah say qul like in the other ayahs in the previous page that we read? He says, because when it comes to worship, particular, particularly worship, that there is no intermediary. There's no need for it because worship is directed to Allah uh, uh, directly. There's no need for intermediary, which obviously if somebody did that, would fall into shirk as per the previous lessons and evidences we've been going through. So the shirk wasn't just uh, say that if you worship Allah, worship Allah directly. That's what is what you're commanded with. If you raise your hands, and ask Allah, which is a which is du'a, which is supplication, which is a type of worship. Then ask Allah directly. No need for something in the middle and go through some middle man or middle thing or middle path. Uh, the Sheikh says, as for the the misguided ones, then they use intermediaries and they say, oh, I can't ask Allah directly. Oh, oh, I need to ask Allah something. I need to supplicate. I need to use such and such or such and such a grave or such and such a thing. And I need to use it as an intermediary to channel my worship through that. And of course, that's shirk, as mentioned by the Sheikh previously. And he says, this is what some other people say. <clears throat> the Sheikh continues, says, O مثل الذي حدثتكم عنه الصورة يخرج الصورة وإلا يقول ما ينفع دعاء بدون الواسطة هذا نوع من التضليل العظيم للعوامر والجهال وحرف لهم عن دين الله سبحانه وتعالى باسم الواسطة أو الواسطة أو يسمونها أيضا شفاعة يقولون هؤلاء شفاعة لنا عند الله نحن ندعوهم ليشفعوا لنا عند الله سبحانه وتعالى وهذا عين صني المشركين الأول كما بين الله كما بين الله سبحانه وتعالى ذلك بقوله ويعبدون من دون الله ما لا يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ويقولون هؤلاء شفاعون عند الله قل <تصفيق> ويعبدون من دون الله ما لا يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ويقولون هؤلاء شفاءنا إن الله قل أتن أتنبئوا الله أتنبئون الله بما لا يعلم في السماوات ولا في الأرض سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون. So then the Sheikh in this paragraph he says, unlike was mentioned. In the previous lessons, uh, where the Sheikh mentioned a story where a person was told by so called his Sheikh, take, take this picture of me and wherever you are, take this picture, put it in front of you, and worship uh, Allah, but use me as an intermediary. And of course, that's Sheikh. 
and um, and he says that some people also use use the word shafa intercession for this kind of thing. Of course, it's not shafa at all. Uh, but the sheikh says that people are misled by the mis the ones who misguide um, who feign knowledge and trick the people and um, misguide them by way of these terms and using them incorrectly to try and legitimize the shirk and disbelief. And then the shirk he brings this ayah that we read from Surah to Yunus verse 18. So if we go to Surah to Yunus um, verse 18, we'll see that where Allah Jalla said, and they worship besides Allah things that hurt them not, nor profit them. And they say, these are our intercessors with Allah. Say, do you inform Allah of that which he knows, not in the heavens and on the earth? Glorified and exalted be he above all that which they associate as partners with him. So that's all ayah that we've read. And that's clear. That clarifies what the and evidences what the Shaykh has actually mentioned here as well. So continuing, the Shaykh, he continues and he says, فَهَذِي لِبَادَةُ لِغَيْرِ لَا الَّتِي يُمَارِسُونَهَا إِنْ سُئِلُوا عَنْهَا قَالُوا هَأُولَاءِ شُفَعَاءُ لَنَا إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَعْنِي لَا نَقْسِدُوا بِدُعَائِهِمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشْفَعُوا لَنَا إِنَّ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلِهَذَا نَبَّهَا الْمُصَنِّفُ هُنَا قَالَ يَدْعُوهُمْ وَيَسْأَلُهُمُ الشَّفَعَةِ مثل ما قال المشركون الأول هؤلاء شفناء شفاعنا إن الله أي أطلب منهم أن يشفعوا لنا إن الله تبارك وتعالى. then from another angle these people who say and attribute um, their shirk with shafa intercession wrongly and they say for example the sheikh says he says so this worship this is worship to other than Allah as mentioned in the previous paragraphs. And they practice this. And if and if they were asked about it, they would they'd say these are uh these are interceders for us along uh, with Allah. These are these are our interceders. Meaning by that that they mean that we are uh we are seeking their dua there's so you know by 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 making dua and their dua then we are seeking intercession from them for us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh says this is why the author of the book that we're reading in the waqd islam that uh, he pointed the the author pointed our attention to this uh, phrase here the, where he said they they supplicate to them and they ask them for intercession so they supplicate to these people whether they are alive or dead and they ask for intercession. And of course, this is completely incorrect that what they do. And the Sheikh says, like it like how the the Arab pagans said when Allah mentioned about them in the Quran, Ha Ula Ishufa Una in Allah. When they worship those idols and they used to ask those idols and use them as intermediaries, committing major shirk. What did they say? Allah said about them that they said, they would say, oh, these are our interceders with Allah. And that's why we are supplicating to them. You know, that they are requ- that they are seeking and requesting from these idols or wherever they may be, alive or dead, um, intercession with Allah. Wa ta'ala. So then moving on, the Shaykh, he says, وَيَسْأَلُهُمُ الشَّفَاعَةُ وَشَفَاعَةُ جَمِيعًا مُلْكُ لِلَّهِ أَلَيْسَ قَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ قُلْ لِلَّهِ الشَّفَاعَةُ جَمِيعًا الشَّفَاعَةُ جَمِيعًا مُلْكُ لِلَّهِ لَيْسَتْ مُلْكَ أَحَدٍ وَإِنَّمَا هِيَ مُلْكُ اللَّهِ وَلَا أَحَدَ يَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ يَشْفَعَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لِأَحَدٍ كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ فَالشَّفَاعَةُ مُلْكُ لِلَّهِ فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَكُونَ مِمَّنْ يُشْفَعُ لَهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ يَتْلُبُ ذَلِكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مُبَاشَرَةً لِأَنَّ شَفَاعَةَ بِيَدِهِ لَيْسَتْ بِيَدِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ أَوْ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ أَوْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَوْ غَيْرِهِمْ لَيْسَتْ 
بيدهم ولا يملكون الشفاعة ملك لله الشفاعة لله جميعا وليست بيد أحد كائنا من كان ولا يمكن لأحد أن يشفع إن الله إلا بإذن الله ولهذا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ولا تنفع الشفاعة عنده إلا لمن أذن له وقال جل وعلا في آية الكرسي أعظم آية من كتابه سبحانه من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه So basically in this paragraph the Sheikh mentions that a shifa'a intercession it's for Allah alone it belongs to Allah nobody else owns it it's Allah owns it and it's all for Allah nobody owns anything of it and so we brings an ayah here that we read from Surah Az-Zumar verse 44 the Sheikh he mentions the speech of Allah Say, say to the Prophet, say to the people, say, say that um, that intercession belongs to Allah. All of all of the intercession, all of it, it belongs to Allah. It belongs to Allah and nobody else. So the Sheikh says that this is it's 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 Allah's. This belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Sheikh says that nobody can try and say and say. Uh, that they can, you know, you know, uh, can intercede with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for somebody else, whoever they may be, except by the permission of Allah. Why? Because all of that intercession it belongs to Allah and therefore you need permission from Allah. And then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, so whoever wants to be from those who are interceded for on the on the day of judgment he requests that intercession from Allah directly he doesn't need to go to this person that person this dead person this sufi sheikh this um, so called holy person whatever no you ask Allah directly for sh uh, for shafa you go you ask directly you supplicate and ask Allah directly Right, as I mentioned by the Sheikh here, you don't go to, uh, you don't uh, seek it from the prophets when you no know, the dead you seek it from a person who's dead or the prophets, or you seek it from the uh, close associates or friends of Allah, i.e., the awliya of Allah. Nor do you seek it from the angels of Allah. Nor do you seek it from anything or anybody else. It isn't in in their hands, as established as Allah said in the Quran. That shafa intercession, below, all of it belongs to Allah. Therefore, you need to ask Allah directly. And it makes sense, clearly. So then the Sheikh mentions this, and he and, and he mentions this uh, as as we said. He just repeats himself here, just for emphasis. And then the Sheikh brings these two ayahs from the Quran. Wala tanfa'u shafa'atu indahu illa liman adina lahu. And that that intercession won't benefit except those who have Allah has given permission to intercede on your behalf. So an inter even if somebody interceded for you, if Allah didn't give them permission, it's worth nothing. Therefore, uh, the Shaykh will explain later uh, uh, and how to understand this uh, in terms of who can be an interceder and who, who, what are the, the principles and conditions of interceding and being interceded for. So the Shaykh continues, and he also mentions from, from the greatest ayah of the Quran, Ayatul Kursi, Pabe, Man Dalladi Yeshfaw Indahu Illa Bi Idnihi. And if we go to that, to that ayah, clearly we're all familiar with this, but let's go to that ayah, 255. And if we look, at the meanings, we should see who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission. So Allah has clearly said it here as well. There's different parts of Quran. Here's another example where no one can intercede except with Allah's permission. So then the Shaykh continues, he gives another ayah, says, وَكَمْ مَلَكٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ لَا تُغْنِي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا 
illa min ba'di an ya an ya'dhan Allah liman yasha' wa yarda and then the shaykh says wa li hadha shafa'atu la takunu nafi'atan aw la takunu nafi'atun itlaqan illa idha adina Allah li shafi'a wa radiya 'an al-mashfu' 'an al-mashfu' lahu illa idha adina jalla wa ala li shafi'a wa radiya 'an al-mashfu' lahu wa man kana kafiran mushrikan yad'u ghayra Allah la tanfa'u shafa'ata ash-shafi'in so let's have a look at this now so if we go to this ayah, Surah Al-Najm, verse 26, on the meaning of the ayah, and there are many angels in the heavens whose intercession will avail nothing except after Allah has given leave for whom He wills and pleases. Again, an example for us, an evidence that an intercession only is helpful when Allah has given the intercessor permission and also uh, who he is pleased with as well so Allah has to be pleased with the intercessor and gives him permission and also the one who's being interceded for this person has to also be uh, uh, Allah has to, Allah he needs, he needs to gain the pleasure of Allah Allah needs to be pleased with him otherwise there is no intercession so then the shaykh continues and he says that that this intercession it isn't beneficial uh, except if Allah has given permission to the in interceder and that Allah is pleased with the one who's being interceded for as well. And that's clear. And so the shaykh says then, in contrast, and he says, well, then in terms of a disbeliever, a polytheist, who, who worships other than Allah and calls upon other than Allah. No intercession of the interceders will ever be useful to that person. Why? Because this person has earned the anger of Allah and of course in this example is a disbeliever. So the shaykh continues. He brings another evidence from the Quran from Surah Al-Mudathir, verse 48. فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِئِينَ And they won't benefit, the, and the, the intercession of the interceders won't benefit them. As mentioned earlier. Well. And the Shaykh, he continues, he says, حَتَّى لَوْ قُدِّرَ أَنَّهُ شُفِيَ لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ لَا تَنْفَعُ وَقِسَةُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْخَلِيلُ وَيَا فِي صَحِيَ الْبُخَارِ مَعَ بِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ قِسَةٌ مَشْهُورًا so then the Shaykh moves on and he says, even if, even if somebody interceded where Allah gave permission to them to intercede and they interceded for somebody that Allah is not pleased with, then it will not benefit them. And the famous uh, narration and story is the story of Ibrahim and his father. When Ibrahim salam interceded with Allah in regards to his father and Allah did not accept it. Why? Because he was a disbeliever and he was a mushrik and a polytheist but did not accept it. And so you can see in the blue highlighted text uh, the hadith. So, so let's read the hadith. From Sahel Bukhari yeah, um, where it was said يَلْقَى إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْخَلِيلُ أَبَاهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَيَقُولُ لَهُ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ لَا تَأْسِنِي فيقول الآن لا أعصيك فيقول إبراهيم الخليل خليل الرحمن أفت الأنبياء الله بعد نبينا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام اتخذ الله خليلا يا رب ألم تعدني ألم تعدني أن لا تخزني يوم يبعثون وأي خزي أخذ من أبي, أبي الأبعد قال الله عز وجل لإبراهيم الخليل عليه السلام إني حرمت الجنة على الكافرين. So if we look at the the translation of that and we translate that, then we'll see that briefly here with the meaning, the Prophet ﷺ said, إبراهيم إبراهيم 
will meet his father on the day of resurrection and will say, O oh my Lord, you promised me that you would not let me in disgrace on the day when people will be resurrected. And Allah will say to him, I have forbidden paradise to the non-believers, to the disbelievers. And so the Shaykh continues and he says, هذا هو الجواب إني حرمت الجنة على الكافرين And this is the answer from Allah. Verily, verily I have forbidden paradise to the disbelievers that the disbelievers are prevented from entering the paradise. Paradise. ثم يقال له انظر فينظر فإذا بذيه And then it will be said to Ibrahim alayhi salam, look, and when he looks, he will see his father in the form of a hyena. If you're all familiar with the hyenas and how hyenas are, yeah? He'll be in that form. And the Sheikh says, يَعْنِي يَتَحَوَّلْ وَالِدَهُ إِلَى هَذِي الْهَيْئَةِ هَيْئَةُ الذِّيخِ وَهُوَ ذَكَرُ مِنَ الذِّبَاءِ So, he'll be a hyena, a male hyena. And, and then he'll be thrown into the hellfire thrown to the hellfire and sent to the hellfire and that's going to be the end of uh, the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam then the shaykh continues says wa fi sahih al-bukhari min hadithi abi hurairah yaqulu abu hurairah inna an-nabiy alayhi salatu was salam dhakara yawman yawm al-ghulul wa 'azzama amrah wa khataba an-nas muhadhiran min wa qala alayhi salatu was salam so then the, uh, the Shaykh brings another um, uh, hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, uh, narration of uh, Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. I may Allah be pleased with him with regards to ghulul, you know, being tight-fisted, um, money-wise, wealth-wise. Uh, and, and if we look at the, uh, uh, the hadith, we, we will understand, inshallah. From the meaning, so let's uh, translate this. So basically, uh, let's have a look. Let me read this to you, brothers. So <coughs> it says, "Don't commit gulul, for I should not like to see anyone amongst you on the day of resurrection carrying over his neck a sheep that will be bleating, or carrying over his neck a horse that will be nothing, a uh, neighing. Such one will be saying." Allah's apostle intercede Allah for me and I will reply, I the Prophet will reply So I salam, I can't help you for I have conveyed Allah's message to you nor should I like to see a man carrying over his neck a camel that will be grunting such a man will say, O oh Allah's apostle intercede with Allah for me and I will say, I can't help you for I have conveyed Allah's message to you or one carrying over his neck gold and silver and saying, O oh Allah's apostle intercede with Allah for me and I will say, I can't help you for I have conveyed Allah's message to you or one carrying clothes that will be fluttering to the end of the hadith. As you can see the message with regards to uh, this hadith, that once the message has been conveyed, then there is no help for you in these in, in terms of what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned here. <coughs> so we'll continue. So then the Shaykh explains the word Samit, etc. Meaning in this hadith, meaning uh, uh, gold and silver, you know, and wealth. Uh, so then the Shaykh says, um, وَقَوْلُهُ صَامِتٌ أَيْ ذَهَبٌ وَفِضَّةٌ وَالْعَرَبْ يُقَسِّمُونَ الْأَمْوَالِ إِلَىٰ قِسْمَيْنِ نَاطِقَةٌ وَصَامِتَةٌ so, so basically, it's good to understand this. So the word, the Shaykh says, the word نَاطِقَةٌ uh, anything that's classed as a wealth that is نَاطِقَةٌ then that wealth is such as, um, you know, uh, cattle, livestock and things like this. If it's wealth that is classed as samit or samita then it's to do with uh, wealth such as gold silver etc okay so the sheikh mentions that he says when you some now i'm walan samita when he had a call alayhi salatu was salam la yati yana ahadukum uh yom al-qiyamati wa la raqbati samit fa yaqulu ya rasulullah aghithri fa aqulu la la amliku laka shayin qad ablagtuka qala la amliku laka shayin qad ablagtuka unzur al-wasita so basically, the Sheikh says, look at this. So in terms of this hadith, what do we learn? We learn 
that once the message has been conveyed to the people, it's upon them to follow the message and not what the Prophet ﷺ came with. And that in these examples that uh, 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 in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ replied to those people in those instances and circumstances, that I said to them, I convey the message to you and I can't help you and I can't avail you of Allah anything. So the lesson from that and the moral is, the story is that once the message has been conveyed, we need to act upon that which the Prophet ﷺ informed us of and commanded us with. And progress is from we stay away from, and by doing that, we then uh, will be victorious and saved from the punishment of Allah and will be saved from His anger. Amman khalafa hadi al Nabiyyin, wartaqab fal al Mushrikin, wa qal hadi shafaat, hadi shafaatun, wa hadi wasilatun, wa hadi wasitatun, hada la yahla bil fouz. Uh, so then the Shaykh says in contrast the one who uh, goes against the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and perpetrates all kinds of sins for example of the polytheists resembling the polytheists and he says this is intercession Wrongfully, he says, this is intercession. And he says, oh, this is uh, ways and means of seeking nearness to Allah. And he says, this is an intermediary that I'm using. All of this won't benefit him and he won't be victorious and nor will he uh, um, uh, be rewarded for that. Uh, and rather, uh, Allah will punish him. It will, uh, it will, this, these people will earn the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving along, moving along, the Shaykh he continues, he says, أَيْدًا قَالَ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَةً رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ أَسْعَدُ النَّاسِ بِشَفَاعَتِكَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ قَالَ مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ خَالِصًا مِنْ قَلْبِهِ وَلَمَّا قَالَ لَهُ رَجُلٌ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَسْأَلُكَ مُرَافَقَتَكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ قَالَ أَعِنِّي عَلَى نَفْسِكَ بِكَثْرَةِ السُّجُودِ دلّه إلى الطريق الطريق كثرة السجود العبادة الإقبال على الله سبحانه وتعالى. so the sheikh says and this is and and this also and and the reason also is where uh, where Abu Huraira uh, رضي الله عنه said in a hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he narrated this hadith he said O oh, Messenger of Allah who will be the most happiest and one who will be re receiving your intercession on the day of, res uh, of resurrection? And the Prophet ﷺ replied, he said, whoever says, La ilaha illallah, um, sincerely from his heart, purely and sincerely from his heart. And the Shaykh also mentions when he, when a man said, to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya O Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, I ask for your companionship in paradise. And he said, he said to him in reply to answer what he wanted and what he asked for, he said, uh, focus and turn your attention to, uh, to uh, prostrating much, increasing in prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increase in that worship. And the Shaykh says here that he showed him, he showed this person the way of how to reach. He showed them, he showed by answering the questions, their questions, he showed them the way and how to obtain that. And that was by uh, by telling them, telling this person to prostrate as much as possible. I increase in worship and increase in uh um, seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continuing and striving in being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and moving closer and closer and closer to Allah and that's how we would obtain um, uh, the companionship of the Prophet sallam, in Jannah and so the Shaykh he continues and he says to us وَلَمَّا نَزَلَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ دَعَا قُرَيْشًا دَعَا أَعْمَامَهُ دَعَا عَمَّتَهُ صَفِيَّةً 
دعا بنتها فات بن بنتها فاطمة كلهم يقول لهم لا أملك لكم شيئا قال يا فاطمة بنت محمد سليني من مالي ما شئت لا أغني أنك لا أغني أنك من الله شيء والله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا أنزل عليه عليه في القرآن ليس لك من الأمر شيء الأمر لله ولهذا إذا لم يفهم هذا الباب على وجه الصحيح يظل الإنسان ظلالا مبينا ويدخل عليه دعاة الظلال وأئمة الباطل فيحذفونه باسم الشفاعة أو باسم الوسيلة أو باسم الواسطة ونحو هذه الأسماء So then, wrapping up the lesson, the final paragraph here, this lesson, the Sheikh, he mentions, he says, and when, when the following ayah was revealed, was sent to the, was sent down to, and revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَنْذِرَ شِيرَتَكَ لَكْرَبِينَ From Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse 214. If we go there, we can see, verse 214, Surah Al-Shu'ara, let's read it. And warn your tribe, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of near kindred. So warn your tribe and your the ones who are close to you and your tribe. The Shaykh says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he invited and warned and, uh, uh, the, uh, the people, the you know, Quraysh, his tribe. He, uh, you know, called and gave da'wah to his uncles and his Auntie Sophia, for example, and also his his uh, his daughter Fatima, and, and other than them. And he said to all of them that I can't avail you anything. You know, in front of Allah, I can't avail you a thing. La amliku lakum shayan. I don't own a thing for you until when it comes to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And he said to Fatima, uh, radiallahu anha, his daughter, ask me anything from my wealth. Wherever you will, from my wealth. But other than that, I can't avail you over Allah anything. And and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also revealed in the Quran from His speech, "Laysa laka min min uh, uh, min al amri shay." Saying to the Prophet uh, in Surah Al Imran, verse one hundred twenty-eight. Let's go there. Verse one hundred twenty-eight. Not for you, O Musa is the decision. Yeah? So the Prophet has no decision. This is for Allah. That all of the affair is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet showed us the, the clear path in how to reach salvation and to be successful in this life and in the next. And so the Shaykh says, and this is the reason that if, now this is the important point, the Sheikh says, if this topic and subject that we've discussed today and the last few lessons is not understood correctly, then people are easily misguided and clearly misguided from, from this. And they end up falling to shirk and all kinds of misdeeds. And shirk as being the gravest sin that you can commit and leads you to leave Islam and erases all your good deeds. And they also... If you don't understand the subject and topic correctly, then you're at the mercy of uh, uh, these um, uh, misguided imams and scholars who misguide the people and send them away from the correct path. And they say to them in the name of intercession and they confuse them and, and they don't explain to them what intercession is. And in fact, they uh, use the word intercession for major shirk and they trick the people and they fall into do fall into these major sins, uh, and obviously uh, the biggest one on top of them all is sh- uh, the, this major shirk, um, and which leads them out of the fall of Islam. And they use these words such as intercession and wasila, seeking nearness to Allah, uh, and intermediaries and all kinds of other things they try to use to trick the people if they haven't if the people themselves haven't understood this subject and topic correctly
So inshallah, we'll stop there for today. And um, we'll continue from the highlight text in red next week. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilahad. Wa staffurka wa tubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.